And um, I want to remind all of you, it's really important to have these like connecting lines in between. It's just like when you write, um, when you're writing a paragraph in an essay about a text, you say what text you're talking about, right? And then you even underline it sometimes to make it really obvious. What am I talking about? Well, what you're talking about here is this equation, double. What you're talking about here is these equations subtracted, or whatever it happens to be. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do just like I did here. Do the left-hand side all together, and do the right-hand side all together. Here is the left-hand side of equation one. And I'm going to subtract the left-hand side of equation 2a. Like so. Are you happy with that? It's just a substitution. It's just a swap there. That's fine. What about the right-hand side? Five it's 5 there, and it's 14 there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. You okay with me? So you, that, this is one of the reasons why you know, labeling your equations carefully is so important. Okay, I've written it out and now I can start to work with it. Um, this first pair of brackets is really quite redundant, but it did make it neater for me to separate out which bit's which. Here, I have to be careful when I expand because of this minus sign. What's going to happen? It'll make it four plus here. Yeah, so this minus 2x is just minus 2x, and this is going to be the opposite of an opposite is back to the original thing. So that's going to be plus 4y. Yeah? On the right-hand side, I've just got some numbers. What value am I going to be left with? Negative Very good. Okay. Now we're almost at the point where we have actually eliminated things. As we intended, what you've got is this 2x and this minus 2x colliding with each other. Okay? So they're gone. And all I'm left with is these two guys. When you collect like terms, there are seven of them. Yeah? And there's a negative 9 left over there. Okay? Uh, last little piece, I guess I need to get the y by itself. So I will divide by 7, which leaves you with that. Okay? Now, that looks a bit icky. You know, sometimes you get an answer and you're like, I expected something nice and neat, and that looks gross, okay? Well, number one, this is why we don't rely on graphically solving things all the time, because you would never guess that as your answer, right? You'd never read your table and think, oh, that's exactly minus nine sevenths, right? Um, we will find out in a second if this actually matches up, because we can substitute back inside. What would you like me to do with this? Because I'm not done yet, am I? Yeah. I have, I have a whole bunch of different choices, okay? Now, what I want is just, I've got the y, so I just want the x. Do you agree with that? Just want the x? Now, it looks to me like the easiest spot where I just have an x right there. Do you agree with that? You see how it's by itself, I don't need to divide by anything. So I'm going to substitute this into equation 2. Let me explain what's going on. So you can see the first line I've written here, that's just a substitution. Everyone should have the same line here. You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's just me replacing y. When I went down to here, you can see I've done two things. One to the left, one to the right. On the left-hand side, I've said um, 2 times 9, and it's actually minus 2 and minus 9. So that becomes an 18, and it's a positive. Yes? That 7's left alone. Now, that's dealt with my left-hand side. Now, I know I'm eventually going to have to go to the right-hand side. Think of this a little bit like when you're driving, and you're like, oh, I'm going to turn onto this road, but the next turn I'm going to have to make will be a right turn. So I might as well get in the right lane. Well, when I write this number, I could have just written it as a 7, right? But I know it's going to have to do a dance with this guy. And you see what the denominator is? Right, it's a 7. Oh, so so I might as well seven. just change that into a denominator of 7. If this were like a 6 or something like that, well, I'd change this into a denominator 6, mm -hmm. just so these guys can talk with each other. Does that okay. make sense? Okay. 49 over 7 is just another way of writing 7. Um, can you see what I did there? I just subtracted. Did I do it correctly? Yeah, that's I think so. Okay, now, even though I, I agree, like when I look at this pair of numbers, I'm like, really? Um, I'm not super convinced. We know there's an easy way to test if these solutions are right. I can put it back in. Now, would you like to give me a suggestion? Which one do you think I should put them into? Now, to be fair, if, we, if I wanted to do this perfectly, I should put it into both 1 and 2, because that's what I started with, remember? But, think about this, I've kind of already done one of them, haven't I? 
Haven't I already done two? I just did that. And if what I've done here is correct, then I don't need to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Really, all that's left is to check one. Okay, so let's have a good go. Let's test. Whoa, this is wet. Why is this wet? That's weird. There's like water here. Is this it's like dripping out of the ceiling? Yeah, that's that's not cool. Okay. Anyway, fix that later. <laughs> test. Um, there's water here. You can't see it. Anyway. Um, ooh, marker. All right. So on the left hand side, I've got two x plus three y. Right. Yeah. So two x plus three y. And now I'm going to take what I think x is and what I think y is, and let's see what happens. Two uh, x. That's two times this. Plus three times this. How does my substitution look? Mm -hmm. Happy with it? Yeah. Two times thirty-one. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Uh, three and negative nine. Minus that should be minus 27. twenty-seven, shouldn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty-two take away twenty-seven. I'm pretty sure that's thirty-five. Yep. Nailed it. So even though it looked weird, well, the maths confirms it. And if you want, if you want to be like double, triple, quadruple sure, you can pop back into equation two, but we've kind of already done that, so I'm satisfied. Okay. Okay, now, well done. We got to the end. Let's just rewind all the way back to this line. Like, this is the first thing I wrote down to actually start solving the question. Um, and I told you back then, I was like, well, it's not clear why I'm doing this now. Do you see why I did this? For example, why do you think I went for 2 rather than 3 or 4 or 5 to get it to 2x? Okay, because I was like, look, I've got 1x here. I want these two to be the same. Okay, yeah? So that's the first thing. Now, that's the end of this number. Why do you think I went after equation 2 and I looked at equation 1 I said, forget it. I'm not mucking with equation 1. Because you'd have to divide and then you get all these weird fractions. Okay, so the first thing is, like, if I wanted these two to be talking the same language, right, then I have to divide this by 2, which is going to make that a fraction, make that a fraction, no thanks, right? Or if I wanted to do the y, uh, you're going to have to multiply both of these by numbers. Like, you'd multiply this one 2 and this one by 3. Gross. I'd rather avoid that if I can. Sometimes you have to, I'll deal with those maybe a bit later on, but this is the basic mechanics of it. Make a smart choice to minimize the amount of work you have to do. Okay?